all my Harley Davidson fixes that worked and some that didn't. Let's get into it. Hello, welcome to Revelator Alf and good morning. Uh, yeah, lots of uh, chocolate bunnies running around this morning on the roads, but it must be that time of year. Anyway, hope you're having a lovely time. So, uh, out on the Heroic Harley, uh, and I thought, do you know what? I've done quite a few things to this bike over the last sort of three years, and I thought I wanted to give you an overall review of the little fixes that I've done that have worked, ones that could be evolve and maybe need reviewing and the ones that just didn't work at all so let me just say first of all these lights which i've put here these auxiliary lights brilliant absolutely brilliant at night really cheap fix uh for what i wanted and the the fog light uh switch uh that i found and that i activated worked a treat Okay, uh, the wire mesh at the front of the oil cooler, yes, works a treat. The only problem is that it rusts quite a lot. So I'm looking at either a sheet metal one that's uh, powder coated uh, or a uh, hard plastic. So I'm looking at that. The voltage regulator cover, the wire mesh which I put around it, great for winter riding. I've had to take it off a couple of times just to clean behind it. But the actual voltage regulator itself is protected uh, but it does rust as well so i'm looking at alternatives maybe take it off for the summer and just reintroduce it in the winter oh yes the fender extender here uh works a treat on the sport glide the only problem is you still get caked in mud uh, when you ride along in the winter especially and when it's obviously wet uh, so it, it works to a certain degree to keep off quite a bit of uh, debris off the oil cooler but the voltage regulator because it's so low still gets splattered hence why i got that wire mesh down there as well uh, but in, in terms of your legs no it doesn't do anything at all okay so another question i get asked uh, quite regularly is about the external breathers uh, which i run so this has gone through lots of variations over the last uh, couple of years uh, in the end of the last uh, few months all i've done i've just extended the the pipes got rid of it going all the way around the air filter and just popped two short tubes out uh, the back of the air filter housing there no catch can nothing like that so basically very simple very cheap just running behind there i'm not having any oil fall below and it's been absolutely fine now but it is something i monitor quite a lot so that's something i do okay so the other thing was the vented dipstick here i get asked this quite a lot uh people review those videos and say you know what is it like you know thanks for you know i'm going to introduce that as well i've got to say i've gone back to stock uh i've got rid of it and the reason is there's a couple of things so first of all it worked it worked fine i did notice a bit of improved throttle response the the engine seemed to spin a little bit better yeah but the only thing i noticed that every time i took a pillion uh kept on catching or the foot kept on catching on the top there and taking off the uh the rubber tubing so it wasn't a great great fix and it would leak and you know it wasn't that great in the end i had to pack the dipstick quite a lot to stop it leaking but then it wasn't really having much of an effect anyway what i also noticed was as soon as i introduced it i every time i shut down the engine i'd get this kind of hissing sound where air would be sucked back in through the engine breathers it's almost like it was creating a, a vacuum uh, in the crankcase which it really shouldn't which is weird but as soon as i went back to the stock dipstick uh that hissing sound uh, stopped so there you go now i also what i did do uh i after 5,000 miles, I checked the top of the cylinders for increased carbonization as well. And between the external breathers and that, didn't really make much of a difference. So I thought, do you know what? I'll get that back to stock. I'll just leave the external breather tubing there and see how I go for another 5,000 miles. So I may reintroduce it. I may go for the top of the transmission uh, fix as well. Uh, but, you know, we'll see. Now, there's been quite a few other little fixes uh, which I've done uh, on the bike over the last uh, couple of years. I've raised the handlebars. Now, for me, this is a personal choice. Uh, raised them by a couple of inches. Um, great. Work to, work to treat. I've added some, you know, handlebar accessories, that kind of thing. And then I've taken them off. 
didn't quite like that. I added a tire pressure monitoring system, but I took that off because I wasn't really using it. I just regularly check my tire pressures in the normal way. These handguards here uh, work well. They deflect the wind, but I wouldn't say they're the they're the best, especially during the winter. But they they look cool. Okay, adding the electrical accessory port from uh, the USB uh, housing there at the front and running power up to the handlebars works an absolute treat. So that works a great. The under seat accessory harness, uh, which I put on, I never used, <laughs> so I took it off. However, the one system which I do use, that Hex Easy Cam, the Hex from a Hex Innovate, I've done lots of videos on that. I did a, uh, a giveaway on that as well uh they've uh I, I use that a lot in a hurry yes yeah, so that hex easy can works a lot and i and i power a lot of electrical accessories especially during the winter you know heated gloves and uh, that kind of thing uh so that works uh, that works a treat the the mud guard or the rear fender gap fix uh all i would say about that is works however i modified it again in that well not modified it i reuse it in a different way so instead of having it in front of the gap i actually tuck it into the gap and it's a lot less debris comes through so that works a lot better uh the other thing was the gas cap rattle uh, and I filled that with silicon and it, it works a treat I don't get any more rattling at all the only thing I would say is that once it's cured and you use it the first few times you might notice that that bits of silicon dry silicon flake off so you just got to be aware none falls into a fuel tank and I've had to redo it a couple of times as well but again it's it works uh, works a treat you know uh, a cheap fix so on the whole Lots of the fixes which I've uh, found um, have worked great. Some I've not used anymore. Some I use for a limited period, or some have been replaced by uh, other systems. I, mean, I suppose that's the way of the world, really, isn't it? But anyway, I thought I'd bring this to you. I'm always trying to find new fixes or new solutions to small little problems on uh, on this bike on the Harley Davidson uh, Sport Glide, the soft tail over uh, the M8 engine, of course. So if you watch the channel, great. Thanks a lot. Keep on watching and uh, well I'll catch you again on another video with hopefully a few more solutions and a few more little discussions about Harleys and lots of other bikes and stuff don't forget to subscribe hit that bell like and share check out the website revelator.com